Hi, good morning. My name is Franco Sancho. I'm lecturer of uh, qualitative marketing research, and we are going to see practice six, organizational level in discourse analysis. Okay, this is uh, the, the third level in, in uh, discourse analysis, uh, and we are going to continue with the uh, analysis we have seen in previous sections. As we saw in previous sections, uh, we created quotes in the first level in the, in the textual analysis and codes and family of, of codes in the second level, that is um, conceptual level. Uh, in this case, uh, in, the, in, the, in this sixth practice, we are going to uh, create relationship, re relationship between codes. So we are going to be able to establish uh, nodes and links between the networks. Uh, as, we, as, as you can see, or, or an, an, analog, an, analog, an analog of um, of what we are going to do, is like a family tree. We are going to try to organize the concepts we have previously defined in the, in the different practices in order to see the big picture, to see if they are related in, and what with, uh, which type of relationship uh, are between them. As you see, one person, one individual, it could be considered the code. The family of codes, this is a uh, uh, Game of Thrones, and this, has, this is the, these are the, all the different families. So we can see that here we have the Stark family, and this is the family of codes. That means codes that have some relationship between them, and this is why we have put them all together. For instance, if we are talking about consumer journey, uh, journey map, all the codes that I, I happened before the activity, the, the experience, are considered to be a family. During are also a family, and after are also a family. So what we are going to do is try to find relationships between families, in this case, between the Starks and other families. So this is what we are going to do in, in practical terms, with a, coming from a different examples. So, um, Summarizing, in the first level, well, first of all, what we did was to upload the uh, PDF, the primary documents, to the to our main document. In the first level, we underlined all the different ideas that we thought that could be related to the uh, objective of our study, the textual level. Uh, in, uh, in the last practice, what we did was to conceptualize, uh, to, to, to categorize these ideas into codes. Remember that they are, the three approaches we have seen in the class for the conceptual level are the customer journey map, that is like a process, and within uh, the, each of the different uh, steps, before, during, and after, we can uh, think about the different, for example, customer experience generator. This can be another type of concepts, another approach, and the last approach is the, are the levels organization, uh, sorry, the experiential level, transactional level, and relational level. So once we have these uh, levels, we have done all until conceptual level, now it's time to relate the, the different, uh, the different uh, concepts in networks. What we are going to do is to find relationships. So this is the, the, the main, um, well, the big picture of the study we are doing. In the first stage, we that we have already done it, is to delimitate the objective of the study in the second stage to gather the information, to uh, describe the fieldwork and also to gather the, the information. And in the third technique, sorry, in the third stage, we uh, are going to analyze the information. Uh, we, from an ex experiential perspective, that is the, the textual analysis, we create the, code, the quotes and the memos. In the analytical perspective, we created them uh, codes and the family of codes, and now in the interpretive perspective, we are going to link them to find uh, relationships. So, in this case, in the organizational level, we are going to uh, use two perspectives the structural and the, the interpretive. Uh, in the structural, we are going to bring uh, us closer to the higher hierarchical position of the attributes. So, in this case, what we are going to try to do is to put in a map all the different concepts, uh, or in different maps, maybe more than one, all the different concepts we have seen in class. 
and to put in the center the most important uh, of the of the network, the most important um, concepts, and uh, outside the center we are going to put the second the secondary. And in the second uh, perspective is interpretive is when we are going to try to drive some relationship between the different concepts. So when we are talking about a structural analysis, this uh, idea of structural analysis, this, this uh, tools come from sociology uh, and it is aimed to show the root idea that Repeat uses the text to, to extract information coming from the text, the essence, the meaning of how the dialogue is enunciated. There are four types of uh, tools that are used in sociology and we are going to focus only in one. Well, just for you to know, the first one is binary oppositions, the second one, semiotic table, the third one, semi-triangle, and the fourth one, tables are matrices. We are going to focus on semiotic table from a, from, from a marketing perspective. The formal definition of semiotic table is a representation of relations between the distinctive features of categories. In this case, we are going to focus on customer typology. Uh, as you can see in, in red, if we have four, time of, four clients and four different types of customers, we want to look for the different uh, citations, the different quotes that define different types of customers. In this case, an example can be the wise customer, and wise customer means the knowledge there, that they consider that the, now, the knowledge, these kind of customers consider that the knowledge regarding a service is derived from experience. So they are very focused on tradition and the maturity of the product. They want to, they consider they are experts because they have visited, for example, the thematic part many times. The, no, the, the novice or the novel, on the other hand, they are, they are opposite. They value discovering new things. They want to be surprised. So this is people that uh, is new in this kind of service and they want to find new things, interesting, surprising things. Another type of customer can be the critical one that is the stricter in terms of evaluation and they are very sensitive to changes. So these are, this would be this kind of very strict and very, um, um, very, that are very, into, uh, very um, interested in analyzing the quality of the service. On, on the other hand, the modable are the, those that see an opportunity in change. This kind uh, uh, that are new customers, but they are but they, they are open to advice. This is why they are modable. And these are four types of customers that we have found as an example. We have seen a couple of examples. We are going to see some, a couple of examples. Um, for example, the, from the uh, previous uh, studies, from a, a previous study last year from Oceanographic Thematic Park, they, they have found four types, the wise, the noble, the, mm, those that are critical can be, and non-critical. Atentos is atentos. Uh, atentos mean that they are very interested in the details, and these atentos are, that they, they are not, that they don't care very much about the details. As you can see, they have found these four types of customers and they have found some quotes coming from the from their uh, in-depth interviews and the, and the focus groups that support this, that this kind of um, like customer exists. For example, wise, they have found some ideas that support that, that, that there are some wise uh, customers regarding this service, novel and so on critical and no critical. The second study we are going to see is the Dream Scheme at the Iranian camp. They also found say wise and novel and also critical and non-critical, moldable. Okay. And of course there are a lot of quotations here supporting that there are four types of studies. In your studies, what you have to do is something similar. You have to read your, again, your, um, in the interviews and your focus group, trying to find ideas that support different types of customers. We are kind of uh, trying to segment or to find the typical individuals that come to this kind of uh, thematic bar, restaurant, hotel, and so on. And finally, we are going to see networks. Here we, you have an interesting reference. This is the, uh, a free book we have seen throughout the course. 
that could be interesting to check if you don't know how to do the things, how to do qualitative research with Atlas TI. Here you have the link. And also the Atlas TI guide, user guide. Here we, they have a section, this is also free, where, where they explain how to do network views. So what are network views? Network views, as I told you, is a kind of graphical representation of the concept we have seen in class and also the different elements that are included in the, uh, in the relationship between the concepts. So why they are the most used element in qualitative research? They allow, allow us summarizing information of previous uh, practices. They facilitate the presentation, the, the graphical presentations. Uh, and they also uh, ease drafting the results and conclusion, conclusions. Facilitating the, present, the presentation of comparison between different, for example, years. It's a summary, as I told you, and they synthesize the large amounts of information. So they are um, always included in a study. They should be included. How we are going to do, how we are going to create these networks. So it's not, it's not very difficult. We have to go to the top menu. There is one, one section called re network. We click on network and we can, um, we can open the network um, manager. And we can also click on this icon. This, uh, I'm going to show you the icon. This is the icon. We can click also in this icon and do it in a different way by using a drop down menu. Once we have opened the, the, the network menu, what we can do is to select all the different, um, the code manager. We can select all the different codes by clicking on them or by clicking on uh, well, we can select all together. And once we have selected all, we click on the right uh, button and we open the network view. Once we open the network view, we are going to have a page like this. We are going to have something like this, a new one with all the different codes we have selected. We can select all the code together or we can, if we are going to create two or three graphs, different uh, the networks we can select. For example, first, the ones related to the customer journey map. In the second level, we can select the ones related to uh, the, the, the different levels, experiential, relation, relational, and transactional. And in another one, we can create, uh, we can open alone the ones related to the customer experience generator, or we can mix. So once we have this, we have all the concepts in our Blackboard. We need to relate them. How to relate them? It's not difficult. What we do is to put our, well, once you, we have this, we can put our, sorry, we can put our mouse on one concept, click on control and drag it on to the other concept. So we are, we are going to see this later, and it's going to create a relationship. We can also relate, create, select two concepts and click on relationship here. There are many ways to do it. So uh, the idea when we have, well, first of all, as you see, everything is not organized. The first thing is to organize them visually, to move them, to put them in order. We are going to see this later. And, late, and after, to create a relationship between them, as you can see. And also to save it with a name. So you see here, we can save it with a name. And that's it. This is the way. How to create relationship? If we have two codes, for example, in this case, how to create a relationship? We can put on one concept, we can drag uh, to the other one by clicking in the control, and we can, this is going to be open, the different types of relationship. If there is association with, between the concept, if it's part of it, if it's cause, if it contradicts, if it's, for example, imagine we have two elements that are associated or related. When one thing happened, the other one happened. So we would choose 
associated with. The first one is associated with. If, for example, we are talking about customer journey map and we have the different concepts, this is the main concept, and we have the different concepts that constitute, that conforms the, the um, we have the family of code, customer journey map before, and we have the codes that appear before. The relationship we would use to relate this concept is part of. We would use is part of. Here we are, is part of. And there are many others. But in general, you are going to use these two. So uh, another way to create, let's going to see another way to create the oceanographic of Valencia, the one of the studies that we have seen during the, during the course, show us a different way to do. We go to network, new network view. It's in Spanish, but I'm going to translate it by talking. Import nodes. Import nodes means which type of concepts or family of concepts what you want to put in the, in the whiteboard. So here we can see in the last part that we can select the different things we want to put in our whiteboard. And we have the different codes. Once we have the different codes, we can create the relationships. Here you have an example. For example, they, they say, uh, customer journey, all the different things that are related to customer journey map, for example, before, or customer considerations to the visit, the motive to, the motive to visit, information, recommendation. As you see, we can open also the different quotations that conforms. Don't worry about the colors in, in yellow. This is because um, in practice number six, we are going to see some connotational analysis and this is to underline the connotational analysis, don't forget. So for example, in this case, they relate the, the different levels, experiential level, the different elements that are related to the experiential, experiential level. And here we can see how Dream Sea Mediterranean Camp did it. They used, as I told you, the link, and they selected the different, they put a name, and they selected the different elements that, that they wanted to appear in the network. Once they have done this, what they did was to create a relationship between the different elements. And at the end, they had the different networks. Um, in this case, I want to tell you that maybe this is too complex in order to create our own uh, network. There is too much information in this network view. I would recommend you to do it more simple. I'm going to show you, I'm not going to do it for you because uh, this is part of your job, but I'm going to show you an example on how can you organize the, I, I, I also said this in class today, but I'm going to show you how to organize this. For example, which type of uh, elements you can select to do networks that are convenient, that are useful to be interpreted. One second, that PowerPoint is opening. I'm going to show you just an example. So imagine, so imagine we are doing a study. So my advice is that you always, I'm going to put here just the things that you can use. For example, in the first network, first network, we can use the following. It would be interesting to include all the different elements regarding customer journey map. For example, the families and the codes. And you can use or you can mix this with, in the first network, with the customer experience generators. If you remember, the customer experience generators were physical evidence, uh, staff, processes, and so on. So you can do, do a first, the first network, including these elements. 
And if you do a, a first network including these elements, you are going to see something similar like the one that I'm going to show you now. For example, you are going to have customer journey map before. This is going to be a family of codes. You are going to have customer job name up after. And you are going to see, sorry, during and after in order. So the first thing we can have is this, like the main elements of our customer of our codes. But we know that in the customer journey map before we have, remember, this, day, this is the image of a customer journey map. There are some activities that happen before, for example, the reservation or the booking of the room, the arrival and the check-in, for example. These three can be before. So we can see the booking, the arrival, we can see only these two, for example, these two. These two can be codes related to customer journey map before. So what we are going to do in the program, of course, is to relate this and this to customer journey map before. And which type of uh, relationship we would use? In this case, given that these two, these two elements are These two elements are part of, we are going to use is part of. I'm not going to do it with the program because I want you to do it by your own, okay? But we can see that these two elements, these, these two, these two co concepts are related to customer journey map before. If we come back to the uh, customer journey map, we see check-in, uh, uh, room, dinner, for example. So we can see the different level here. During, we can see check in. Room, this is an example just. And just for you to see. And for example, dinner or re restaurant, restaurant. If there are more things to, uh, to assess, we are going to put all the different things we are going to use. So in this case, we are going to do the same. We are going to put a, an arrow, a relationship between these concepts and the family of concepts, the during family. With the program, of course, I'm going to do this in, and we are going to use also in this case is part of for all of them because they are part of a family. And finally, if we go to the customer journey map, we see after can be uh, the checkout, it can be the satisfaction, it can be the recommendation. So we can do one as an example, for example here, satisfaction, we can do recommendation. If we have a measure online recommendation and offline recommendation, we are going to have both, for example. In this case, it's, an, it's, a, it's a simple example. So once again, we, could, we put the arrows to relate the concept with the family of concepts. And we also use this part of. So we have most of the things we have, we want. This is the, our first network, okay? And we, the, last, the last thing we need, we need to do is to include one more thing, that is the relationship. These two, as you see the arrow is a little bit different. It's a two-way arrow. And in this case, uh, we are going to relate before, during, and after, because we expect that if an individual have a customer journey map, the experience is high before, it's going to be related to during and after. 
So we we'll use him instead of is part of, now we use is associated to. With, sorry, is associated with. For this relationship and for this relationship. And here we have the code. It's an example of code that is quite good, quite interesting, quite convenient. If we want to do the same for the second level, for example, the second network, we are going to change different thing. We can include in this second network, I did some different things, for example. We can include customer journey map, but now instead of customer journey, uh, customer experience generator, the levels. We can inc include the customer journey levels. And in this case, for example, if this would be the case, we would include transactional, customer experience level, now they are different. Transactional, remember, as we have seen in class, relational and experiential. Remember that this is the order because we assume that the basic, the most basic relationship between the customer and the company is a transactional level. The, 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 the basic, the most basic, when, when the customer is only interested and the company in the transaction, transaction itself, giving a service in, in, in exchange of money and time. The second level is relational and the, that is a little bit more and experiential is the most complete, most uh, full relationship. Now the, the codes are different because remember, I'm not going to write all of them, but remember that if we are talking about the levels, uh, we are going to talk about the different elements that include the transactional. Going to eliminate this and you need to put other, the codes that you'd use in this section. Okay. We can use also, for example, customer journey map, the levels, and also in, the, in a second level, we can use the customer experience. Generators as well. Well, these are this is our example. Here you would put the different elements that are your second level of. I hope this, this, this has been a, an, an interesting example for you. As you see, this kind of two complex, um, two complex networks are difficult to follow. The one I show you in PowerPoint is easier, okay? I want you to do one or two or three, two, three, one, two, three. If you have problems, don't worry, we are going to solve this in class. So just to finish, how is going to be the practice we're going to see? The first thing you need to do is to correct, if, if you need to, to reconsider the concepts and the, the codes and the family of codes, it's time to do it. If you see that there are problems of your code in previous practices, you need to focus on them. You remember that they should be related to customer experience, both generators and levels, and customer journey map, and also some characteristics of the individual. Because in the first part, you need to use semiotic table to uh, describe the client's typology, to find this kind of a square with four types of clients. And given giving some example of quotes that define this type of, of clients. And finally, you need to create different graphical representations, that is the network by visualization that we have seen related to the objective of our, our studies. Uh, we saw this the 4th of April and you have two teaching weeks until the 28th of April to send me a Word document with uh, sub sub subsections one and two and their hermeneutic unit as usual. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you have enjoyed this practice and see you uh, next week in class.